Okay, last set of transformations we're going to look at uh, are going to look at whenever we add or subtract inside of the sine or cosine functions. Uh, and as you guys know, that, that that's going to correspond to uh, a horizontal shift either to the left or to the right, depending on the value of C. So we have a couple of rules here. So it says the graphs of y is equal to a times the sine of bx minus c, and y is equal to a times the cosine of bx minus c have the following characteristics. Again, assuming that b is greater than 0. So uh, once again, the amplitude is going to be the absolute value of a, so the number out in front of sine or cosine. The period is still going to be 2 pi divided by b, which is the coefficient of x. And then what's going to change here is that the left and right endpoints of a one cycle interval can be found by solving the following equations. So the first equation we have to solve is going to be bx minus c is equal to 0. And the second one is going to be bx minus c is equal to 2 pi. And you guys have actually been doing this the whole time with functions that we've looked at up to this point without being aware uh, of doing so because like the functions that we've looked at up to this point have been like y is equal to 2 times the cosine of 4x um, and when you made your table you started that table at 0 and then you ended that table at 2 pi divided by the coefficient in front of x which is 4 which was pi over 2 and if you set 4x equal to both 0 and 2 pi, when you set 4x equal to 0, that occurred at x is equal to 0, which gave you the starting point uh, of your table. And when you plugged 4x and set it equal to 2 pi, when you solve for x, you got x equal to 2 pi divided by 4, which gave you the ending value in your table. But when you add or subtract by a number c, that's going to affect the starting point for your table uh, and, the, and the ending point for your table. So I want to take a look at one example that kind of chorus or, uh, involves a lot of the transformations that we've looked at uh, in this lesson. So you guys see that the function gets a lot more complicated in this example. So we have uh, y is equal to negative 2 times the sine of pi x minus 2 pi, and then we're going to, going to add 3 to that function. I'm going to go ahead and work this one uh, out uh, all the way to completion. Okay, so uh, first thing we want to do here is calculate the amplitude. So again, the amplitude is going to be the absolute value of the coefficient in front of sine, so the absolute value of negative 2 is 2. The period is going to be uh, 2 pi divided by the coefficient of x, which is pi. So that's going to be equal to 2. Uh, and then we're going to multiply that result once again by 1 fourth, because that's going to give us both our scale uh, whenever we're graphing and the incremental change for x in our table. So 2 times 1 fourth is going to be 1 half. OK, so what we have to do next, because we're adding or subtracting inside of the function, is we have to solve the two equations up above to figure out where to start our table, what x value to start our table at, and what x value to finish our table at. OK, so we're going to set pi x minus 2 pi equal to 0. And then we're also going to set pi x minus 2 pi equal to 2 pi. That's going to tell us where to start and end our table. So when we solve each equation for x, the first one, when I add 2 pi to both sides and divide by pi, we get x equal to 2. And then for the second equation, when I add 2 pi to both sides and divide by pi, we get x is equal to 4. OK, so once we have that, we can go ahead and make our xy table. Again, it's going to have five entries. Where we're going to start our table is going to be this value here, which is going to be 2. Where we're going to finish our table is going to be this value here, which is 4. And then the incremental change for x, so our change in the x direction is going to be this value that we found here, which is 1 half. So I'm going to add 1 half to the previous value to get the next value in line. So 2 times 1 half. Or sorry, 2 plus 1 half is 2 and a half, which is 5 halves. 
plus one half is six halves, which is three, plus one half is seven halves, plus one half is eight halves, which is four. Okay, now let me go ahead and erase this so I've got some room to write. So our acronym for sine is intercept, maximum, intercept, minimum, intercept. But with this particular function, since we're multiplying out front by a negative, that's going to reflect our graph about the x-axis. So the intercepts are going to be in the same location. The maximums become minimums, and the minimums become maximums. So my acronym here is going to be intercept, minimum, intercept, maximum, intercept. So what we want to do is we want to find the y-coordinates of those five points. <clears throat> okay, so typically where our graph has intercepts, the y values are going to be zero, but when we look at our function here, we're adding three, so we're taking that graph and shifting it up three units. So instead of our intercepts being at y is equal to zero, those now get shifted up to y is equal to three. So this value is going to be three. The third y value is going to be 3, and the fifth y value is going to be 3. <clears throat> With an amplitude of 2, our minimum is normally going to occur at negative 2. But when we shift that graph up 3 units, the y coordinate is going to be 1. And then for the fourth entry at 7 halves, that's going to be a maximum. So when our amplitude is 2, normally the maximums occur at 2. But since we're shifting the graph uh, up three units, that maximum is now going to be at five. Okay, so once we have those values, we can go ahead and sketch the graph here. So I'm going to make my scale in the y direction be one. <clears throat> and this is where you have to be careful. OK, so we said that our incremental change or our scale in the x direction is one half. So we have to start our graph with an x value of one half. And then we have to go one half of a unit for each tick mark. So the next one is going to be at one. The next one is going to be at three halves. The next one is going to be at 2, which is where we're going to start our graph at. And then we're going to keep going until we get out to 4. So the next one's going to be at 5 halves, then at 3, then 7 halves, and then at 4. Okay, so all we have to do now is plot the points from our table. So uh, we're going to be starting at the point 2, 3. Then we go to 5 halves, 1. 3, 3, 7 halves, 5, and 4, 3. So that right there is going to give us the first period for our graph. Now to get the second period, it's your choice whether to extend the graph like one period to the right or one period to the left. I like extending my period in this particular case towards the left because it's going to wind up saving me paper because um, I already have the y-axis drawn. So if I just repeat that same pattern over here to the left, um, graphically my function is going to look like this. And this gives me the second period for the graph of that function looking like. So if you chose to extend the graph to the right, that's OK as well. There's nothing wrong with that. You just need to draw two periods for uh, the graph of that function. So um, that should give you uh, kind of a wide range of what to anticipate uh, on your homework. And if you guys have any questions, you can shoot me an email, or I'll probably have a discussion uh, at some point this week. If you guys have any questions, uh, you can ask at that time. So hopefully this helped and um, I'll be sending lessons uh, electronically like this in the future. All right, hope you guys are well and healthy and hope your families are healthy as well. 
and uh, be safe, and we'll talk to you again soon. Take care.